Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to talk about a tri-band mobile radio antenna. The antenna we have on the bench here is a Pulse Larsen NMO 150-450-758. This is a tri-band antenna that covers the VHF, UHF, and 7-800 MHz spectrum in one antenna. With the rising popularity and availability of Public Safety Project 25 tri-band mobile radios such as the Apex series from Motorola or the Harris Unity series, an antenna such as this that covers all three in one bands becomes very important. Now you've, another option you have is you can use a triplexer with three separate antennas if you choose to do so as well, but this definitely simplifies your installation solution. Now Motorola also offers a tri-band antenna solution but as you can see it's a much larger form factor. Now some time back Gorillacom did a video on this particular antenna here and tested it out and I would encourage you to check that video out. The physical package of the antenna is rather compact in nature measuring it under 18 inches in length and a total base diameter of less than an inch and three quarter. The contact of the antenna is of a pogo pin construction which is nice because this right here provides a more positive contact than for example the Motorola offering here and also when you're working with NMO bases depending upon the installation situation the distance between that center conductor and the physical ring of the antenna can vary. The antenna features a spring-loaded base which is nice for those inadvertent impacts with certain objects while you're traveling down the road with your vehicle and the height of the body of the antenna at the base in relation to the spring location is much better than the Motorola which will further serve to minimize damage to the mount and the antenna itself with impact. The antenna also features a super seal gasket. Now if you're installing the antenna and you don't have enough width for the super seal gasket it also has an o-ring groove and a provided o-ring to allow you a sealing surface. Now those of you who aren't familiar with the super seal gasket you can see this lip right here and when you tighten this up there's no better sealing solution for an NMO mount in my opinion. Advertised performance data that comes right from the technical data sheet is a useful SWR bandwidth at VHF of 150 to 174 megahertz at UHF of 430 to 520 megahertz and at 7 800 megahertz 750 to 870 megahertz. Gain of the antenna is unity gain at VHF, 5 dBi at UHF, and 4 dBi at 7 800 megahertz. And the antenna is rated to handle 100 watts of RF power, so it pairs well with the Apex 8500. So we're going to take our antenna and place it on a vehicle with a standard NMO mount, and we're going to test with test equipment the performance characteristics of the antenna versus the data and the technical data sheet with specific focus on the 2 meter and 70 centimeter amateur bands. These are the antennas we're going to test today against our tri-band antenna which is at the very end. We're going to go ahead and have some basically reference antennas here. We have a VHF quarter wave, a UHF collinear, and a 7-800 megahertz quarter wave antenna. And then we'll go ahead and we'll throw our Motorola multi-band antenna on there. And then following that with our Pulse Larsen tri-band antenna. The test instrument we're going to use today is an Onritsu Cellmaster and what we're going to test is, is we're going to test for SWR bandwidth and we're going to test for return loss. It's going to flow very fast so don't fret, I don't like to waste time on my videos. This is our VHF quarter wave and we'll discuss some of our instrument settings that we're going to use for the test. This is an SWR of 1 to 1, this is an SWR of 3 to 1, this is our bandwidth right here. For VHF we're going to use 144 to 165 megahertz because that's basically going to take all the way from the rail fan end all the way back to the beginning of the 2 meter amateur band and that's the frequencies we're most interested in. Now what you can see from this VHF quarter wave here is is that I've got this antenna tuned for the 2 meter amateur band so you can see how it starts here like one half to one and goes down and then it rises up again and this line right here represents like a 2 to 1 SWR so that gives you some idea of the bandwidth performance of the VHF quarter wave. Here's our return loss of our VHF quarter wave antenna. This is our UHF collinear antenna and how it performs. Here's the return loss of that UHF collinear antenna. And here is our 700 
800 megahertz quarter wave antenna. We're sweeping from 750 megahertz to 870 megahertz. And here is our return loss for our 800 megahertz quarter wave. Here's the VHF performance of our Motorola multi-band antenna. And you can see it's actually really good across the swept range. Here is a return loss of VHF at the Motorola multiband antenna, and you can see it's actually really good. I mean, look at that. It's exceeding 25 dB of return loss. Let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and see exactly. Yeah, going down there. 35 dB of return loss at that resonant point right there. That's very good. Here are the results at UHF with the Motorola multiband antenna. This is the return loss of our Motorola multi-band antenna at UHF frequencies. Here is a 7 800 megahertz performance of our Motorola multi-band antenna. This is a return loss at 7 800 megahertz of our Motorola multi-band antenna. With our Pulse Larsen tri-band antenna, this is its performance across our VHF swept range. And you can see that our resonant point is right smack dab in the middle between 144 and 165 megahertz. This is our return loss at VHF for the Pulse Larsen tri-band antenna. Here is the UHF performance of our Pulse Larsen tri-band antenna across the swept range. And here is our return loss at UHF frequencies of our Pulse Larsen tri-band antenna. Here is the 7-800 megahertz performance of our tri-band Pulse Larsen antenna. This is the return loss at 7-800 megahertz for our Pulse Larsen tri-band antenna. So comparing these two tri-band antennas to one another, the Motorola and the Pulse Larsen, the Motorola held the advantage in VHF, the Pulse Larsen and UHF. And, you know, both of their 7, 800 megahertz coverage, which covered across that entire range of spectrum. So knowing that, I think it's going to come down to two factors in making a choice between these two antennas, one of form factor and one of expense or cost price point. This is a big antenna when we're talking about form factor. I mean it's 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 a rather large profile antenna and this one here is a much lower profile antenna and I think that this one here would take abuse much better than this one would. If you hit a limb with something like that it's probably going to cause some damage. Let's talk price point. The Pulse Larson goes for about fifty dollars retail and if you purchase the Motorola tri-band under the Motorola label, it's around $180. Now, PC Tel Maxrad makes the same antenna and sells it for $90. And oftentimes you can find the Motorola ones uh, on the surplus market sold as new old stock for around $100 on sites like eBay. But wait, there's more. Those of you who've watched my channel for a while know I love to experiment with antennas. And I wanted to increase the performance of this antenna in the 2 meter and 70 centimeter spectrum while still maintaining operability in the 7 800 megahertz spectrum. So I knew that I needed to increase the length of the web. What I had in a junk box is one of these old resonators, which would look like that originally, from a 800 megahertz collinear antenna. So what I did was I took my angle grinder and I cut it off and made it a little bit longer than the factory whip. And this is the kind of results I got. So it's easy to see with just some junk box parts and a little ingenuity that it's easy to modify the performance characteristics of the antenna to operate better in the 2 meter and 70 centimeter amateur bands. In closing, when you're evaluating two-way radio equipment, it's important to consider the market that it's targeted for. And, you know, commercial equipment is targeted towards a market that is utilizing this equipment in austere conditions on an everyday basis to accomplish tasks and in many cases is a life safety item. It's a shame that much of the radio equipment you see reviewed on YouTube is at best hobby level equipment and is of substandard quality. I can assure you this 
particular antenna is not of substandard quality. As always, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.